Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. We continue to try to get missions into orbit around Mars and hopefully this time I won't make so many mistakes. Uh, yep, well, anyway, there's Mars. This is Mars Tug 3. We've also got a Mars Tug 2. This one is the one with the circular docking port, the one Kerbals could pass through. Well, of course, not on this, but to handle modules that have that docking port. And we are just going to, well, I think we've got some Delta V in this engine if we want to use it. Um, 800, oh, sorry, 487 meters per second. That could start us off capturing. We might as well use it. Um, probably it would have really mostly boiled off. Well, we have had boil off. Look at the oxygen. Um, we've got diminished oxygen compared to methane. I don't know why, I, I always thought that methane and oxygen boiled off at the same rate, but whatever. Anyway, so we've got diminished delta V, but I don't think it's as diminished as it ought to be, but we'll use it, we'll use it. Let's just uh, get on with it, uh, get into orbit. Wait, uh, should we, let me make sure that our orbit's going to be in line with things. Uh, why did Phobos and Deimos have to disappear? Um... Uh, well, maybe they'll appear again if I focus on Mars. There we go. Uh, this orbit looks, well, it looks like the best we can do from here, probably. So, there we go. That will capture us, and then we will handle the rest of the business. Though, I'll probably leave it in that high orbit first, because, well, I mean, it's probably going to take some time to get to Apoapsis anyway, so that we can handle all this other stuff first. Oh, we have to pay attention to MTV2 already. Okay, um... Alright, I'll add an alarm for this and jump to that. Now, obviously, we probably should have set the alarm for this node for MTV2 further ahead than this. I mean, one minute ahead is not sufficient for an ion engine burn of this magnitude. Um, but I'll just quickly replot that and move it up closer. I gave myself enough time, I'm sure. Um, we've got 35 days until we have to get there, uh, so it's like 10 meters per second per day. The ion engines can definitely handle that. So let me just replot a little bit uh, further along and then we can do the burn. Well, at least 9 hours of it until we have to pay attention to the quest module probe. Okay, I handled a bit of the MTV2 maneuver and this is just a dummy maneuver on entering Mars SOI. Our periapsis is a bit high, so I would like to bring that down. But this is going to capture with thrust, not with a heat shield or anything, so that's good. Unfortunately, we can't immediately take care of that because, once again, it's going to take about two days to get to periapsis. Alright, so there's an alarm there. And that looks proper enough to me. It seems in line with stuff too. Okay, uh, so I'll continue with MTV2 and the next thing we'll look at is Mars Tug 3 actually arriving at its periapsis. Okay, here we go. Now the thing we need to worry about this is not the atmosphere, but communications. With a uh, manual burn like this, communication is important to us. But it looks like it's going to be okay at periapsis. With a heat shield, you can just let it pass through the atmosphere automatically. There's not a whole lot you can do anyway at that point. But here, we're going to have a horizon issue once we get a little bit further along. But if we do the burn just a little bit ahead of periapsis, we should be fine. I mean, that's not including commsat help, of course. We could be fine all the way with commsats. I'm just looking at its own connection back. Um, it's not going to take a whole lot of time. Wow, I think we've lost more Delta V since last time. Yeah, 331 meters per second only now. Okay, that'll be fine. Okay, separation. Right, switch things. Control from here. Hopefully. And I probably should have unlocked those first. And that's no longer true, the node I mean. 
But we have plenty of fuel, of course. This is a tug. We could probably wait a little bit longer, but let's just get it done. Our little periapsis is no big problem. As long as it's not in the atmosphere, of course. Okay, we have captured... Nope. We'll say no higher than Deimos level. It, uh, actually, you know what? It needs some inclination correction. So hold on, hold that thought. Yeah, we'll probably, let's say, set Deimos as target. Yeah, let's just use Deimos as a reference. And out here, we'll want to flatten that out. We could get to Deimos, it looks like. There's a little rendezvous opportunity there, but I'll leave it be. Okay, 100 meters per second out there, not too bad. I don't know if all we necessarily want to do that. It depends how well all of our other missions will want to, uh, will be able to correct. Maybe the quest module. I don't know if the quest module needs help from this in order to dock. I'll have to check. But anyway, I'll add that node. Hour and uh, one day and eight hours is too soon. I want to handle this correction after everything else. So I'll wait um, until after supply of vessel one. Uh, 12 days should be fine. No, wait, uh, really MTV2 is going to take a while. Let's, let's wait a month. At least, maybe even more than that. Okay, 40 days sounds fine. We've got a nice big gap between Supply Vessel 1 and Mars Trans Vehicle 1. This is all safe as it is right now. Mm, Power-wise, this is a fine, well, it's an okay orientation. It's not having any problems. So, add that alarm. Okay, uh, I'll continue burning with MTV2, but the next thing you'll see is Roadster 1. Okay, here is our Tesla Roadster and its rocket pack, if you will. And we just entered Mars SOI with it, so it's going to have a long wait until it gets to periapsis. We don't have to do a correction here. We're approaching at 73 degrees, which, since it's sort of a commsat, I guess makes sense. Um, so we'll just uh, keep it in that orientation and we'll pay attention to it as it gets closer it'll manually capture into orbit as with most of the th i think all of the things that we're paying attention to in this episode will be manually capturing instead of error breaking so yeah good times <laughs> all right so uh we'll pay attention to this as it gets closer but it is good, it's recharging, uh, it lost all its electric charge, but it's got an RTG in it basically, internal generator, um, so yeah, it should be recharging. And did I slap an extra, yeah, I slapped an extra RTG on the back, so. But it keeps saying core overheating shutting down, I don't know what that's all about. But anyway, as long as we get the power back, it's okay. And we'll, uh, the only trouble with it is that time warping with it seems to cause horrendous lag. It's the only vessel that's like that. I don't know what's up with the configuration of this. Obviously, it's an unconventional vehicle, and it's got unconventional uh, modules on it. And I bet there's something to do with the coding of the modules that messes it up. Um, the, this horsepower thingy and the whole way the engine works on it. But anyway, we don't have to worry about that right now. And we will continue on. I'll continue with another bit of the MTV2 burn. And uh, next thing we'll actually pay attention to is finally the quest module getting into orbit. I probably should have manually turned it to save gas. But okay. Well, you can see where we are. Yeah, you know, periapsis would have been fine, but I won't use an extra ignition now. We've got eight more left. Okay, we have captured. And I'll accept that orbit for now. With 800 meters per second left. Okay, so we're in this orbit. And we're trying to rendezvous with the Pioneer station module in this orbit. We are relatively in line in inclination, but our periapsis is nowhere close. 
what we need to do eventually is um, probably try and raise our periapsis up to it to ease the rendezvous. So something, something around here-ish. But how much is it gonna cost if I just if I don't make it a pure tangent? Uh, wow, one thousand eight hundred. So that's not good. We don't want that. Um, this one's still too bad. I think we're gonna need to get the tug out to help us. And the tug should be pretty close to our own orbit. There it is. So it's not going to have trouble rendezvousing or anything. But eventually if we uh, get this tangency here, what I'm expecting to bring it down is that we need 1067 or so. So that's what we'll take to rendezvous plus this amount, so 1100 or so. But we definitely don't have that in here right now. We've got some, but not enough. So we'll need the tug. Um, we will wait on this quite a long time. We'll have to have the tug do whatever corrections it needs to do first. And then I'll do this in 52 days. But anyway, the important thing is it's safely in orbit and we can work with it. Okay, entering Mars SOI. Mars Tug 2 seems to be in good shape, but we really don't need this stage anymore. It's completely out of all fuel. So let's just uh, do the separation and everything now. And we want to focus on this. Uh, control from here. And activate the... Oh, let's unlock the fuels and then activate the engines. Not that it should matter, but sometimes it does. Okay, I would like to bring the periapsis closer. And then we'll plot um, a little bit closer to periapsis in order to do the capture burn. But again, we'll have to wait on that. But nice to see that it's in good shape. Uh, I'll have to change the orientation right now though. Uh, this is not a good orientation to get any sunlight. And SAS. Persistent rotation a thing? Yes it is. Okay, that would be good. Okay, we've got that alarm in. So it should be, the next thing will be the Roadster capturing into orbit. Okay, folks, here we go. This is the one you've been waiting for, the one you asked for. And we're going to try and capture around Mars. But the question is, is it balanced? <laughs> and you can see how choppy it is when I try and time warp. Look at that. Like one frame a second. Just with this, though. Is that there's a little that's Phobos, okay. Just looking at that spot there. Let me just check how the communication lines will be. Uh probably we'll want to start capturing early. We're definitely gonna lose communication when we reach periapsis. So Okay, about a thousand, that'll keep the periapsis safe, get us into orbit. We'll deal with the fine details later on. So many lines. I guess it's possible we wouldn't lose communication at periapsis with all the satellites and everything. And ignition. Um, well, a little bit imbalance. We've got uh, this much pitch. About 20% off. That seems to be trending downward, so that's good. Oh yeah, we sh might as well start scanning, I suppose. Altitude suboptimal. I think it's probably 500 kilometers that's optimal. So we'll need to bring it down more. Oh, oh, uh, why why is SAS not able to? Okay, stop. We're, we've captured anyway. Um, hmm. 
Smart ASS was able to hold it, but as soon as I took Smart ASS off, SAS couldn't hold it. Interesting. But uh, tell you what, let's uh, keep an eye on the scanner. And I'll note the scanner, please. Still suboptimal. I guess it needs to be higher then, huh? We'll pay attention to it when we've got time. The important thing is we've got a Tesla Roadster in orbit around Mars, and it may actually serve a practical purpose. We'll see. All right. Uh, since it doesn't need to orient itself to get solar power, it's got its own. Well, I mean, I don't know. Now it's electric charges. And maybe if I take SAS off. Why is its electric charge going down? It was actually increasing before. Oh, it's a scanner, of course. Well, that's a problem. The scanner takes too much power. Given that our RT... Uh, yeah. Hmm. Well, we can scan if we are full up on electric charge. We'd have to stick around with it for a while, though, so it can get all those 9,000 units at this slow rate. And when we're not paying attention to it, it doesn't replenish electric charge. So, yeah. Once we've replenished electric charge, we can activate the scanner. We'll just deal with this some other time. Right now, I have to go back to MTV2, which is really what I'm interested in. I mean, I'm interested in the mission with the Kerbals, obviously. Um, but we've got the two tugs to... We've, Mars Tug 2 is still needing to get into orbit. And, of course, Supply Vessel 1 is super important, too, and expensive. But still, MTV2 is the big thing. After last time not being able to capture the Mars transfer vehicle in orbit around Mars, of course, I really think that it will make me feel a lot better about crashing those things in the previous episode if we could at least get our two ion vessels into orbit safely. Okay, here we go with this tug. Should be a breeze, hopefully. Uh... Smart ASS is not very good at this right now. Okay, ignition. And that should be a roughly similar orbit to what we've got for some of the other missions. And we don't need to do anything with this presently. And where's the sun? Uh, it should still recharge. Uh, we'll keep it like that. And now the two big ones. MTV2 and Supply Vessel 1. I'm doing the last bit of the burn with MTV2. And then a Supply Vessel 1. I can show you. Uh, it's about time I showed you one of these ion engine burns that I do. I do so many of them. So let's just jump to it. And then Supply Vessel 1 will be actually capturing. And then MTV2 will come in perhaps a month later because it's been progressively slowing down with all of these. So here we've got the final pre-burn, if you will. I'm going to point out the node again. So Ion Engine's on. Switch to SAS so it holds it properly with uh, persistent rotation and time warping. can see it raising the periapsis and somewhat the apoapsis because we're not quite at apoapsis of course it's a bit radial it's a bit inclination burn a bit of everything mostly prograde now we're, we seem to be a little bit early on this for once let's see what's actually happening around mars so yeah we're just bringing the orbit in here you can see very very slowly we've been getting a lot of the missions to 200 to 300 kilometers so I'll do the same that sounds good enough to me okay so we can get rid of that uh, inclination wise it's got a little bit of extra but we can work with that for now so 35 days and then it's capture burn. We'll we'll start doing something when we enter the SOI, I think. But that's lower than necessary, strictly speaking, but 642, so you see. So should be good to go. Let's double check. Let's say I switch off the xenon engines and just use the methane. How much do we have? 2,400 with the Xenon engines should be enough to uh, make the transfer back home. 
it looks like 1,238 with the methane and oxygen. So uh, we'll have about 500 something left over afterwards. And it's tight on whether we that's enough to capture after we make the transfer back to Earth, whether we can capture around Earth with just that. So we, yeah, we might want to rendezvous with the supply vessel just to help things out a bit. Otherwise, it is a bit tight. But doable, definitely doable, especially after we exhaust some of the methane and oxygen, uh, the delta V, and also after we exhaust some of the xenon gas. Because we've got these two propellants, the delta V calculations are a bit complicated. It's possible that we have enough to do the whole thing. Uh, got that on. Okay, so those are the three xenons on again. And this we can just, uh, well, we don't want to make an alarm right there. We want to make an alarm when we enter the SOI. I do want some time to work with. Well, that Mars Tug 3 probe maneuver is a little bit too close, so I think I'll push that out a bit. And then we'll take a look at Supply Vessel 1. Okay, we are in Mars SOI with the Supply Vessel. And I'm just going to get rid of that alarm. It looks like we could do with a bit of a raise to our periapsis. So I'm going to turn this and bring... <laughs> just turning it makes things worse, of course. We could start slowing down with the ion engines, and we'll probably need to do a radial component to that anyway. So let's say um, in the middle somewhere here, just 383, so that's pretty good. We should use the ion engines like that. I definitely want to minimize how much we do over here. Burn time 5 hours and 44 minutes, and for once I think I'll believe it. Um, maybe, no, I, I, I don't believe it, actually. I think it's probably going to take longer than that. I mean, you take a look at this, 7,400 meters per second in 57 days. So, just figuring on that, it's going to take the better part of a day. Well, okay, my estimate was not good. I should have probably start burning immediately, even. Alright, gotta remember that the methane engines don't exactly have a huge amount of thrust, either. So, we gotta temporarily shut down. Activate these guys. Right over Valus and Marineris. <laughs> Technically, our orbital velocity is still going up with all the engines at full power. That's comforting. But that apolapsis is going up. I, I think I probably should have started earlier, actually. Okay, now our orbital velocity is slowing down. That's good. Still six minutes to periapsis, so we've got time. Okay, we have captured. Well, the rest is details and could be done just with the ion engines. So as long as we don't have an obscene orbital period, I can shut it down. Uh, let's keep it to um, 8 days, 7 days. That's fine. Let me check how much of the methane oxygen we have left. Uh, 971 meters per second, just on the methane and oxygen. Okay, gonna shut those down. Not that this is needing to use that much, it could transfer all of that to some other vehicle. Because everything else the supply vessel needs to do can be done with ion engines, just slowly maneuvering to other targets in orbit around Mars. Um, 8,526 meters per second on the ions. So pretty good, 129 tons delivered into orbit around Mars overall. Of course, uh, the mm, sort of payload, if you will, is this uh, 
food, nitrogen, lithium hydroxide, hydrazine, water, and oxygen tank. But, uh, and there's some extra propellant here, really. But, yeah. There it is. First successful ion, big ion mission capture around Mars. So, next up, the most important one, MTV-2. Okay, Mars Transfer Vehicle 2, along with its crew, has entered Mars SOI, finally. And if we take a look at our situation, food, we've got one year and 336 days, which means that we've been on this mission for more than 300 days, I think. And because I would have packed two years and 270 days of food in particular. And we might want to add some extra food with the supply vessel, we'll see. Um, so far, our crew is uniform in having 18% stress and 6% radiation. So that's not great on the stress, right? Uh, now, 300 days, that's about a third of the full mission. So if, that, if my estimate that it's been 300 days is correct, that should be... I mean, that means that they're going to get three times as much stress, which is up to 54%. Maybe a little bit beyond that. Um, it's possible that the mission could be longer than 900 days. 900 days is sort of nominal. But uh, yeah, I think they start going crazy at 50. So that's a little bit more than we want. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe docking to... I don't think docking to the supply vessel is going to help anything. Maybe docking to the station would. That's extra living space or more correctly, probably docking the station to this somehow. That would be a challenge anyway. But at least I think the station has a whole lot of RCS ports. Could dock it to the end of the, the airlock there. I don't know if I should do an extra ion engine burn here, but like I did with the supply vessel, that seemed to help overall. So right now it'll take 642 meters per second to capture into orbit. So we'll use that as a reference and I'll see what a mid-course, I'll call it a mid-course adjustment. Uh, adjustment along the way will do for us in terms of cutting that down a bit. Okay, looking at the situation, uh, if we do a 265 meter per second burn here, or on average, um, then we're going to take still 468 meters per second at periapsis. So that increases the delta V total by about 100 meters per second. And probably we're going to get some fuel out of supply, uh, the supply mission. Yeah. We'll refine this. And when you think about it, if we had just like not had the solar panels and just combine, confined ourselves to the reactor instead, uh, probably would have, we would have had enough delta V for the full round trip. So just cutting that much mass off would do the trick. So we're getting there. Now our uh, little service module there is locked. So on the off chance that we transferred to Earth but couldn't actually capture around Earth, there would be fuel there for the Kerbals to deorbit and make it back down. Nope, this burn is not going to get us as close as I wanted it to. Hopefully the lander's actual fuel is locked. Yes, it is. The lander's fuel is locked. Well, the Kerbals look delighted at the start of their capture burn. Okay, we've passed periapsis. We're still retro-burning here. It's been a while. It's, it'll work eventually. During all of our business on this transfer window, we haven't had any communication problems. So, I mean, I crashed those things into the surface of Mars, but uh, that was my fault, not because of communication. Well, the communication would be my fault too, but you get my meaning. Um, there we are, we have captured around Mars. Okay, that's about the same. So we have 647 meters per second left in the Methalox. And then a further, it looks like 3,000, but only if we use the Mephalox first, first, which we would not. So let's shut those down. 
2700 meters per second. Now let's just see right away. Let's say I uh, wanted to plan a maneuver, not by impulsive in this case, but rather advanced transfer to another planet. And next opportunity back home. Lowest delta V, 2319. That's in 246 days, it says. Transit duration only 48 days? That seems wrong. I, I don't think this is right at all. Uh, let's. Uh, and this says 73,000. I don't know what that's about. Oh, now it's 1,781 create node. It's frozen up. Can't even make this calculation. I, it might have crashed the game. I hope there's something in the code that says if you can't make the calculation in a minute, just stop. All right, Mechjeb did in fact crash the game when I tried to plot the transfer back to Earth, but I've got Transfer Window Planner, and it says, well, it doesn't know my orbit. It's just assuming a circular orbit at 200 kilometers, and it says 2,659. On the ions, we have 2,748, and then we still have the Mephalox left after that of about 600 meters per second to capture around Earth. So again, pretty tight. And, but we have a time for the transfer back, 515 days, so we'll see about that. And, well, here we are. We have our crew in orbit around Mars. Things have gone better than last time as far as this stuff is, uh, is concerned. And in the next episode, I will try to see what we can actually do around Mars. Landing them on the surface is a tough call. I mean, we do have a lander here, but you've seen how uh, lander things have gone with me so far. I think I would be a little bit more comfortable landing them on Phobos and Deimos first and continuing to practice my landings on Mars before actually landing them on Mars. But yeah, there is a lander here and it's got fuel, but yeah, um, probably not ready for that. We'll see though. We, we have options. We need to dock mod uh, the quest module to the station all in all, the total amount of mass we have in orbit around Mars uh, is probably more than the mass of the International Space Station. We've got 185 tons just with this. So this is larger than... I, I'm pretty sure it's larger than Mir. I, I want to say that. Um, larger than any other station for sure. So, yep, we've got substantial assets and we'll see what we can do. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.